Today, we're going to build a simple text classification model using TensorFlow and Keras. We'll use the 20 news groups data set, which contains around 20,000 news posts on 20 topics. Let's dive right into the code. Before we start coding, make sure you have the necessary libraries installed. We are using TensorFlow, the core library for building and training machine learning models. Keras, a high-level API built on top of TensorFlow, simplifying the process of creating neural networks. Scikit-learn, a popular machine learning library offering tools for data processing, pre-processing, and model selection. Matplotlib, a library for creating visualizations like plots and charts. Now let's import the necessary libraries. Next, we'll load the 20 newsgroups dataset using fetch 20 newsgroups from scikit-learn. The subset argument ensures all categories are loaded. This newsgroups variable now holds the loaded dataset object. This text extracts the text data from the dataset and stores it in a list named texts. And labels extracts the corresponding labels categories for each text and stores them in a list named labels. Now let's pre-process the data. Here we are tokenizing the text. This tokenizer creates a tokenizer object with a vocabulary size of 10,000 words. This means the tokenizer will only consider the most frequent 10,000 words in the text data. This fit on text method fits the tokenizer on the text data. This builds a vocabulary index based on the word frequency in the provided text data. It assigns a unique integer index to each word, creating a dictionary-like structure. This text to sequences method converts each text in the text list into a sequence of integers. It replaces each word in the text with its corresponding integer index from the vocabulary built in the previous step. Here we are padding the sequences to ensure that all text sequences have the same length for consistent input to the neural network. Max length 100 sets the maximum allowed sequence length to 100. Pad sequences method pads the sequences to the specified max length. Sequences shorter than max length are padded with zeros at the end. Here we convert the text labels into numerical labels for the neural network. Label encoder class from scikit-learn creates a label encoder object for encoding labels. Fit transform method fits the label encoder on the labels list and transforms the text labels into numerical representations. Finally, we split the data into training and testing sets for model evaluation. We reserve 20% of the data for testing. Next, we'll build our neural network model using the sequential API from Keras. We'll use an embedding layer followed by a global average pooling layer and a dense layer. Sequential creates a sequential model where layers are added one after another. First, we add an embedding layer. Input dim represents the size of the vocabulary, number of unique words. Output dim represents the dimensionality of the embedding vectors. And input length represents the maximum sequence length. Then we add global average pooling layer. This layer reduces the dimensionality of the embedding outputs by taking the average of each sequence. Then this dense layer adds a fully connected layer with 32 units and ReLU activation function. And finally, we add the final output layer with 20 units, one for each class, and softmax activation for probability distribution. Now let's compile the model. We'll use the atom optimizer and categorical cross entropy loss function. We will use the atom optimizer for updating weights during training. As the loss function, we use the sparse categorical cross entropy suitable for multi-class classification. We also track the accuracy metric during training and evaluation. Next, we'll train the model using the training data. Here X train, and Y train are the training data and labels. We are training the model for 20 epochs. We set the batch size to 128, processes 128 samples at a time during training. Validation split reserves 20% of the training data for validation during training to monitor performance. After training, let's evaluate the model's performance on the test data. This evaluate method evaluates the model on the testing data and returns the test loss and test accuracy. The output shows the test accuracy of the model. This indicates how well the model is performing on the test data. A higher accuracy means the model is making more correct predictions. Now, let's plot the training history to visualize the model's performance over the epochs. As we can see, 
The plot shows the training and validation accuracy over the epics. This helps us understand how the model's performance improves over time and whether it is overfitting or underfitting. Finally, let's use the train model to make predictions on some test texts. We are making predictions on the test text from index 40 to 44 and displaying the actual and predictive labels. This predict method makes predictions on the specified test texts. Then we convert the predicted numerical labels back to text labels using inverse transform method. To show the results, we need the class name values. So, here we get the list of class names from the data set and convert the predicted labels to their corresponding class names. Similarly, we get the actual labels for the specified test texts and convert them to their corresponding class names. Finally, we iterate through the predictions. In this for loop, we print the original text content from the news groups list. We also print the actual and predicted labels for each text. We can see in the output the original text content, the actual and predicted class names for the test texts. Let me remove the original text so that we can see the results clearly. We can see our model predicted three out of five test texts correctly, which means our model predicted labels with 60% accuracy for these five test texts. However, this is just a small sample of the test data. You can experiment with different hyperparameter values like the number of embedding dimensions, number of layers, or learning rate. Optimizing these parameters can potentially improve the model's performance. That's it for this tutorial on text classification using TensorFlow and Keras. We've covered everything from data preparation and model architecture to training and evaluation. Remember, the key to building effective text classification models is understanding your data, experimenting with different techniques, and fine-tuning the hyperparameters. If you have any questions or want to explore this topic further, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more machine learning tutorials. See you next time!